can grow YouTube show. Can you talk about mindful neglect? Ah, uh, one of my favorite, favorite topics. So yeah. I found that the number one question people ask me when they come and see my space is, oh my gosh, how long does this take? Like how many right. hours are you spending per day to care for these plants? And they would be surprised when I said, actually like two, three hours <laughs> a week tops. Right. Tops. And they're, they're so confused by that. And I basically told them like, listen, like if, if I do my homework and I pick the right plants for my space, they will ultimately take care of themselves with very minimal effort on my side. Mm -hmm. And they, I forget who it was. I think it was back in New York. Someone had said, don't you consider that like neglect, like you're neglecting your plants. And I said, no, I'm, I'm just mindful about it. And I was like, huh, mindful neglect. And it became a whole chapter in my book, which is basically just acknowledging that there is another being, another creature, another presence in your home. You're checking in with them to make sure that they're good, but it is not necessarily your 100% responsibility to be fussing over that plant 24 seven. In fact, that mm -hmm. plant will probably do better without you there. Plants have been around for millions and millions and millions of years. They've, they're good. They're We're good. the ones who are relatively new and not as advanced in terms mm -hmm. of, of our evolution. So I treat that, that plant and, and my whole plant family with that approach because I want to be able to check in with them, see how they're doing. I check in with my plants most every day just to see if there's any issues and be proactive about it. But that doesn't mean I'm doing anything. I'm just mm -hmm. making sure that they're okay. And if they're not, then I can intervene and make some changes. But I find that mindful neglect also with any relationship, even human relationships can be very effective because we are our own beings. We are our own people. And I want to view my plants as self-sufficient creatures and beings that just need a little bit of help from me. They don't need it all. And they'll be fine yeah. without me, you know, being a helicopter plant parent. Yeah, I see it. I feel like a lot with beginner plant parents where they just don't want to fail like so bad that they get they, you know, we see it all the time, like over, mm. I've done it over watering plants because I want to make sure that they have the, you know, water that they need, but really it's just about chilling out and like letting the plant adjust to your home. And, you know, usually watering these mindful plant parents that, you know, usually over watering is, is the, is their cause of plant death. Um, and it reminds me, you know, whenever I leave for vacation, I have all this stress about my plants and usually I, you know, pull them from my windowsills and I group them together yeah. and I leave and I think about the plants and I, you know, stress about it. And then I come home, they all have inflorescence. They've all bloomed. <laughs> They're so happy. Thank like, goodness she left. <laughs> I know. Thank goodness she left, like left us alone, but it's true. Like they're designed to survive for the most part. And the ferns that I composted, they would have limped along for a long, long time if, you know, if I didn't just decide to, to move on. Um, and, you know, there's that great meme of like the maiden hair fern, like growing out of a crack, you know. Oh my in, God, in the, maiden in hair a, ferns. <laughs> yeah. yeah, like in the stone, you know, they'll thrive like growing out of a crack in the side of a mountain, but then they come into your house. Um, and yeah, I just thought that was a really interesting, but once again, circling back to like it being approachable and plant parenthood doesn't need to be this like really big stressful thing if you don't want it to be. It can be, mm. right? You can choose if you want to spend hours a day. You can have maiden hair ferns and alocasia and all these plants that require a little bit more TLC and create that structure for yourself. But sometimes I fear that social media has just made it look like in order to be a successful plant parent, you've got to have these crazy, you know, a crazy amount of plants and a crazy schedule and, and all this stuff when, when you really don't. Yeah. I, I could not agree more with that. And, you know, if you come into my house, I'm going to look like I'm a crazy person because there's going to be plants 100%. in the sink and I use my bathtub exclusively to water plants. I've taken yep. one bath in there and that was about it for me. So yep. like there's a certain, you know, look and an impression you get when you see that many plants. But uh -huh. at the same time, if you can just tell people like, listen, this is not a, a chore for me, right? This is actually my moment of Zen. 
right? So in those hours that I'm spending taking care with, of the, those plants, yes, it takes a little bit of time, not as much time as you might think, but I'm also appreciating that time. And I'm using that time effectively, whether I'm listening to your podcast or mm -hmm. I'm listening to music, right? That slows me down. And mm -hmm. I don't think that we should view plants as this instant gratification thing that we just want to have right away. Instead, we just have to kind of, you know, let it happen and just yeah. say, okay, this plant is going to do its thing regardless of how much I want it to grow faster or I want yeah. that yellow leaf to change. And if you just accept that nature's taking its course, it will ease so much of that anxiety and make your plant care simpler and ultimately less time consuming. Do 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 do